Hey, what's up everybody? And uh, I've been wanting to do a vlog for a couple weeks now. And I've been extremely busy. Um, last month, uh, not last month, last weekend, I got swamped with like four different writing assignments and a quiz, which was nuts. So, a few things have happened. I've taken some notes, so. I'm just gonna quickly go through everything. <sighs> so rough. So rough. So, first, I uh, wanna talk about all of the K pop rookie groups that have been coming out these, this, just this month. Just these past two weeks. It's ridiculous. Everyone is mediocre, uh, cheap nothing original it just seems like the k-pop industry is like well you know the world's gonna end in a couple months so you know we might as well try to make some money so i i i don't know i'm not feeling it um they they just need to stop <laughs> but i mean i already know that k-pop isn't really concerned with quality they're very much a quantitative company or industry whatever so I'm not gonna go too far into depth about the rookies of this year if you know the coming of Jesus or the apocalypse or whatever nonsense people uh, assume is gonna happen in December doesn't happen I have a list of rookies I want to talk about that have made an impact on me. Uh, maybe not an impact, maybe more of an impression on me this year. Some good, some bad. Yeah, so I'm gonna save that for later, but if you're not aware, there have been about 60 rookie groups that have debuted this year. Just this year. Ridiculous. And I find it amusing that I can keep up with rookie groups better than J-Rock indies bands. Those are, I, it, I think it's because of accessibility. It's easier to, you know, get rookie group music than some Japanese indies band. Because you either have to live in Japan and even more so, sometimes you have to go to the actual concert to get music from that group. So, I don't know. So, um, next I'll talk about a couple videos that came out. Um, it's more K-pop, sorry. Uh, one of them, uh, both of these I was so torn about and I really wanted to put them in my recommendations and I was even tempted to do a pro and con on the video of why I liked and why I didn't like it. But I'm going to keep my hold on and my promise not to do music video reviews because I can't do music video reviews. Um, all I can do is compare stuff to other stuff when it comes to music videos and say why I recommend certain things I pick out. Like the last one was Sori's uh, Not My uh, You're Not My Style and uh, Rania's Style. They were practically the same concept. So yeah, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go check that out. I do music video comparisons that to stuff that is similar. Um, if you're not sure, like, oh, uh, let's see, it was another example I had. Uh, Ta Ta uh, I can't talk anymore. Taeyong's I Need a Girl and Jay Park's Girlfriend. That was one I compared to because they both had similar concepts and style and whatnot. So yeah, check it out. But um, anyway, so the two music videos. One is DVSK is Catch Me. Um, no, I, I refuse to use the word home in like some people. No. Um, but um, I surprisingly, as a non 
ABSK fan. I, I don't like them. Um, some of their songs are alright, but I can't see myself, you know, getting into them very deeply, like Big Bang or H.O.T. or You Kiss or Beast or whatever. But anyway, so, um, the Catch Me video, I thought it was innovative. Anyway, choreography wise, I thought that was pretty cool with the whole robotic gliding arms and kind of a wavy dance, whatever. I, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I did not notice this before that some, a uh, couple of the sets were from G Dragon's Crayon. I didn't know that. The, the, the one, the one recite, the Two, one or two recycle sets that I did notice was from Boa's The Shadow. Yeah, it was so nice of, you know, G Dragon and Boa to let, you know, DBSK, you know, borrow their sets for the little dance in a box video. Um, yeah, the video wasn't that interesting. I mean, I did say that the, the choreography was pretty cool, but I mean, other than that, it's, there's not much to it. It's just them in our empty room singing and dancing there's not much story but on a positive note note i really 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 like the song like i for a while i was addicted so i guess that was a bit of a guilty pleasure for me next to six green single but i really hate super junior so i, I like tbsk a lot, lot more but um, one thing that bothered me other than the borrowed set thing is the chemistry before between Chingmin and you know, like there seemed to be a definitely a lack of chemistry between the two. Like after they were done like after they're done with like filming everything, they just kind of split apart and do their own thing. So I don't know uh, that that bothered me, but I mean, I'm I'm not gonna be surprised if they're not that close. I mean, not all groups and bands are BFFs, you know. So I mean, look at Duran Gray. I mean, I don't think they really hang out together that much anymore. They kind of consider each other co-workers now. I mean, they've been around for what 12 years or so. So. Uh, Maybe longer than that, I don't know. I don't feel like doing math right now. So, uh, the second one is, uh, I guess it's Spica or Spica, whatever. Uh, I'll be there. Uh, I was really looking forward to their comeback. Yeah, I have a post song about comeback, so it's doing quotes. So, um, I was disappointed. Like, this was definitely a step down from Russian Roulette and uh, painkiller. I I like their darker, emotional, driven songs. They have the best vocals out of all the female groups this year that debuted, and they've easily become my favorite girl group now. Um, sorry, twenty one, <laughs> but uh, the the video. It was okay, but the styling was kind of lazy, and the song was just too... It just didn't fit them. It seemed too cheesy and cheap, and sounded like, I guess, Janet Jackson, and uh, this one song that was popular, I think, in the 90s or early 2000s, I don't remember, but it was... I don't remember who sung it, but it's uh, When the Lights Go Out heard of that song. It's it was like a one hit wonder of a pop song by some like boy group when all these boy groups kept popping up in America. But that's what it reminded me of and that's not a good thing. So I I don't know what they were doing. Um uh, I'm I'm not gonna blame them, I'm gonna blame management, whatever, because that, that that doesn't work for them. They're not the cutesy egg yo whatever type of group. They're mature. They're like, 
I feel blasphemous for even calling them rookies because they're so high on the bar with their their skills and you know I think people need to get over that they're not a strong choreography type group like every other k-pop group they are a vocal driven group which I find more appealing than you know people that can dance really well and they can't sing so just like uh, piggy dolls amazing vocals but their choreography isn't you know the most complicated complex thing in the world and I'm fine with that but in Korean music industry apparently you always have to have choreography in nearly like everything like watching Korean rappers do live stages is very awkward um, especially if you've grown up with like hip-hop and rap and if there is any dancing at all it's like these really I'm sorry skanky girls um, the rappers do not join in the choreography and it's weird seeing that with like Supreme Team and Evia and Outsider, them trying to jump in and out of choreography with these backup dancers and sometimes the song will be so slow and orchestral driven and it just seems weird. Um, Korean music industry, you don't have to have choreography with every single thing you make. It's just not necessary. Just let the vocals speak. Okay. Um, next, I want to say a little bit more about the Sunray scandal. That wasn't much of a scandal at all. Um, I found out that the main complaints come from Korea. Surprise, surprise. Because I was gonna have some issues if it was Japan complaining about it, but it's Korea, and it was—it seemed kind of harsh. What you know, what I read, whether it's true or not, I'm not sure. Because it's from all K-pop, and you know, I do not like all K-pop. I, I kind of take their news when it's not related to so and so is releasing this with a grain of salt. So apparently his groupmates are mad at him about the scandal, but I mean, it's not much of a scandal, so, but Korea is so conservative and they need to like, get over it. I mean, they try so hard to protect their youth from all these dangerous, icky, gross, sexualized things, yet they subliminally, subtly put it into their music all the time with all these skimpy outfits and provocative uh, choreography. I mean, it's not the most provocative, like, compared to here, but still, it's, it, I, I just don't get it. Korea, you need to take notes from Japan because, I mean, you go there all the time and you just need to embrace your sexuality. There's nothing wrong with it. That's how humans are made. I mean, it's it's not like, you know, they're gonna be tainted like here. I mean, I'm, there's, all, there's so much control you can take, but I mean, this, this scandal is not that big of a deal. So just just get over it. There's more scandalous, shady things going on in the industry. This is nothing. Honestly, this is nothing. Um, also, I heard something about it since Big Bang is touring around the world. Kinda, sorta, not really. Stupid world tours that aren't really world tours. Um, other than people complaining in America about how people are buying all the tickets here and end up selling them for more and people overseas buying tickets here too to just screw up stuff. So it seems like everything here, all the shows here are sold out, but I mean it's okay because I'm, I'm not going. So I'm not missing out on anything. Honestly, I was, if I had money. I mean, I, I was planning on going to see a concert like this past Monday, but um, I couldn't 
uh, I was doing really good with this whole paper nonsense to the point where I was feeling good. I was like, maybe I'll reward myself to go see this concert on Monday. But the uh, show was sold out, so I'm sad. But anyway, so everyone have fun at the Big Bang thing. But the thing I heard was in Singapore, I guess G Dragon threw his jacket into the crowd and there was a big fight over it. And so, not surprised. VIPs, y'all are. I, I don't even think it's possible to disappoint me, but I mean, I just thought you were better than that, than fighting over articles of clothing. I mean, can't you just accept, oh, this person got it, let it go. But I guess not, so it's okay, and I didn't think highly of you anyway, um, I just thought you were better than certain other fandoms that I will not mention, but... Oh well, happens. But the whole thing, I have actually witnessed something like that. Um, if you're not in my friend circle, uh, if you're not one of my friends that are watching this video, you would have heard the story of when I went to go see Tokyo Hotel in 2008 with my friends and this mom was really really eager and really loved Bill who at the time was 19 and she was probably I don't know mid 40s early 50s I don't know yelling I love you Bill I love you Bill oh no you notice me please notice me and I'm just like okay you're like too old for him creepy and I just had to think did my mother act like this when we went to go see Backstreet Boys because she really loved Kevin? No. My mom was sensible. She didn't fangirl. But this is creepy. At least, you know, Kevin was like older. I mean, Bill was 19. He's still a teenager. I mean, technically he's an adult, but still, he's in his teen years. Teen years and you're like in your mid 40s and 50s. But anyway. What happened was uh, his twin brother Tom, at the end of the show, threw a towel into the crowd, and this mother and two other girls, most of the crowd was like, and they they had to be like high schoolers, had to be, or maybe at the most, maybe starting college, so maybe like 18, 17, 18 or something, and younger. So we were probably like the oldest people in that in the crowd, uh, excluding the parents. So, they were fighting over this towel, like hardcore fighting over this. But the ridiculous thing was, the mother grabbed this girl's glasses and threw it toward the stage. So at that point, me and my friends were like, okay, it, you know, it, it's time to go. So we left, because <laughs> that was just scary and ridiculous, and I, I, this is what I meant in my, if I mentioned it in post, that Tokyo Hotel fans and their mothers are the worst. There's, I, I won't forget that, um, a lot of, about that show, I won't forget, like, not to ever see them live again because it wasn't satisfying. So anyway, VIPs, y'all need to get a grip. Y'all can't be fighting over each other over stuff like this. Um, uh, moving on to better things. I heard that uh, Dazzle Vision is going to be guesting at uh, Takosho Con. <laughs> I can't read it. Takosho Con. And next year, so have fun. I can't go. I wish I love Dazzle Vision, they're amazing. So, if you're in that area, please support them, check them out, and whatnot. Have fun, rock out for me. Um, lastly, this might be good or bad news, I'm not sure, but Sug announced. announced recently that they're going on hiatus and they're leaving PS Company. 
Okay, so there's a split between how to feel about this. Uh, some people are worried that they'll never come back and think this Mostly, the, they're afraid that they'll never come back. They'll just be on a permanent hiatus. I, I don't think anyone's... I haven't seen many comments about them being sad about leaving PS Company. The other side is quite... Is, is, focuses more on the departure part, on how great this is for them leaving PS Company. So, that's where I am. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that they're leaving PS Company, because... Um, it was nice reading the message that what they wanted, the, what the band wants to do disagrees with what management wants to do, so they're going to do their own thing and open their own company and whatnot. So I fully support that. I like that. So I'm hoping they'll um, have a better deal with this than Miyavi. Not that Miyavi's thing flopped or anything, but it, musical wise, I. It just, you know, I lost some attachment. So I want to improve some, and I also heard people don't really care because they they think Sue sucks, and they you know, their their music was going downhill. But I mean, I can see that as well. So I, I mentioned that in a post. So I'm happy that. They're leaving and they're taking a break to regroup and reinvent themselves and stuff. So I'm excited for what's going to happen with them. And I, okay, this might be a terrible note to leave on, but it's about a PS company. I am waiting for the day. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it like that. I'm, I'm not gonna end it on a sour note. I'm gonna save that comment for my PS Company retrospective if it happens. So that means you guys have to go to Muddy Colt. Uh, the link to the blog is always in the description below. So please check that out and vote on whether you want to hear my retrospective on PS Company. Or maybe you want to hear what I have to say about the Undercoat label. Or perhaps what I have to say about Rain. Or even, hmm, Dern Grey. Yeah, I have a lot of, I have a lot planned. Mm-hmm. So, please go vote. Uh, check out the stuff that gets posted there. Um, I'm expecting a certain change on my blog. So please anticipate that, and I hope you like the change that is coming, and other than me trying to still, you know, catch up with things. So hopefully this weekend goes the way I want, and there will be new content. So, anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, and peace.